Hey everybody, Joey Chris here. Hey, I wanted to take a little bit of time to uh, help you when you're deciding what beam glider to choose. Now, I'm not gonna get into the brands as much as I am on the style of a beam glider. What does that look like? This is typically a beam glider. When you have an I-beam, this would grab along the bottom flange. You would have to know the width of the flange so that you could pick the right unit. Now, this particular one has a fixed D-ring in the middle, and then each side would adjust. I like this style, let me tell you why. If this was on the bottom of the beam and I was pulling it from below, it would travel nice and easy without chatter. The same would go for if I uh, connected to the top flange because the anchor point is in the middle. And when you pull on it, it will be nice and smooth. This particular unit also has mylar sleeves that make it move along the metal really smoothly and I like it. The part I don't like on this one is the little key that keeps this adjuster in place. These little balls on the end can get rusted and then they basically won't work and they'll slip right out by themselves. This means that this unit could move and potentially fall off of the beam. Now, most of the units that we see are now the new adjustable ones that do not have the pin. And the only thing you would do is grab this pin here, push it and move it along and then it would lock into place. Again, fixed D-ring in the middle and you would adjust the sides so that this anchor point ends up in the middle. Why is this important? Well, if I'm walking on structural steel and my anchor point is uh, behind me, the last thing I want it to do is catch on something with a chatter. Keep it in the middle, it'll trail you nice and uh, easily. And again, this one also has that mylar in the middle. If you like this video, go to my YouTube channel, Fall Protection with Joey Chris, and we give you helpful hints on all sorts of fall protection gear and training.